Hello and welcome back everyone. We are still live here at Awards in Amsterdam and I have Simon and Ingo here with me. Welcome Ingo and Simon. Thanks How for are you us. today? We are fine. Thanks for having me. So as a surprise, because you guys went a bit nuts about the waffles in the chat, I've got them live here. Woo! <laughs> 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 for Ingo Thank you. and Simon. Thank you so much. I'll have mine later because I need to talk a little bit. Um, oh, so I hope yeah. you can smell this. This is really good. <laughs> yeah? XD Waffles mm. only here <laughs> at the moment. Um, downstairs, if you're here uh, at the awards in Amsterdam, they're on the ground floor at the XD station. So go and grab some. So welcome. Um, so tell me a little bit about your background. You are a developer, designer. Yeah, I'm <laughs> basically undecided. So uh, I'm a yeah. so-called hybrid. Um, I love creative tools, but I also love um, code, JavaScript mostly. Um, so I really enjoy bringing those things together. Um, so it's oftentimes it feels like hacking the tool. Uh, so if I think if you can improve something, um, yeah, I will try to improve that with uh, JavaScript. So we have this rule of thumb. So if I do something three times, then maybe it's already time to think about automation. Um, and that's what I did uh, over the last uh, uh, couple of months. So really trying to figure out uh, how can JavaScript play a role in the XD ecosystem? I see. And yeah. how long uh, have you been in the industry for? Uh, actually, yeah, I started in 2000. Uh, okay. So it's uh, quite some time. Quite some time, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I've done lots of Flash stuff back in the day. So I was always a big Adobe fanboy, but uh, I also love uh, yeah, criticizing Adobe for what's not really um, working well. And so it's really great to, to be invited uh, to the community with. Um, JavaScript, so we can make the creative world a better place, I guess. Awesome, welcome. And Ingo? Yeah, <laughs> I'm with Adobe since 10 years almost. Um, and uh, I'm not a developer, but I try to support developers <laughs> uh, the best I can um, in a team that takes care for the platform and ecosystem for Creative Cloud, which is, um, tw I think, even 20 years back when we started InDesign, um, this was um, our core idea to say we need to have a um, tool that is extensible. Um, we need to have an ecosystem of third-party developers that build plugins and to fill the gaps that we don't have in the product. And we just reinvented this and came out with a new um, tool set uh, for that for Adobe XD uh, to make also here a really good platform and then build a great ecosystem of Ponen. Um, to really extend um, what we deliver the product. Awesome, very smart. So you have prepared something for us in XD? Yeah, we have yeah. some, uh, yeah, basically a hand-picked selection of plugins. Uh, for those uh, out there um, in the audience who have never tried plugins or uh, who are just overwhelmed by the, um, yeah, the many plugins out there, so <laughs> I just want to show you and share some of my favorite ones. Uh, and I will also give a short, quick, uh, look over my shoulder um, because we have uh, more than 10 plugins in the uh, uh, we are work in progress basically uh, so they're not public yet but we want to share the idea to get it out there to see what uh, the feedback of you basically the community is um, so if you have feature requests for plugins uh, yeah just shoot them in our direction actually I see we already have uh, the Twitter handles and stuff uh, in the chat already so yeah, I'm really looking forward to your feedback. Yeah, thanks uh, to Tim. So click on them, check it out, and yeah, please show us your favorite plugins. Yeah. So let's switch to the screen of Simon. Yeah, so for those who know XD and perhaps have not used it over the last couple of months, <laughs> um, give it another try. We update regularly, so every month we have a new release. I think you talked about this earlier a little bit. And we introduced um, the plugins um, back in Adobe Max, our design and creativity conference uh, in November last year. And now we have more than 100 plugins already live. And yeah, what, what is this that we start with? Yeah, so as you already said, it's a very young uh, ecosystem. So um, maybe let's jump right in here. So this is what basically my 2018 looked like. So you guys <laughs> at Adobe invited us to, the, yeah, to join the XD plugin party uh, really early in 2018. Um, and we jumped right into it. And uh, actually, we just thought of creating a very first simple plugin, but to be honest, we never stopped because it's so much fun. The, the um, developer relation team and the support by Adobe is so great. So, uh, yeah, here's a, a hand-picked selection. 
Uh, but before we dive into that, let's quickly look how we can actually use plugins. For those out there who have never used plugins, it's really just one single click. And this is not fast forward. This is really the real experience. So if you find the plugin, you hit install, and it really just takes one or two seconds, and you're uh, ready to go to use the plugin. So there's no hassle. It's really very well integrated. Um, so one of the first plugins I want to share is called Mimic. That was our first plugin um, that I was working on. And it's basically about grabbing colors, uh, font names, uh, and mock-up images from existing websites. So imagine you have a, a client uh, who already has a website, of course, with all the corporate design going on there. So you have colors, font names, logos, and stuff. Um, and usually, uh, if you want to start a new mobile version, for example, uh, or a design concept for a mobile application, um, you would uh, tackle the browser. So you would open the developer tools, and it's really cumbersome to get all the necessary information. So you would really have to dig uh, through the code uh, a lot. And that's where Mimic comes in, and that really simplifies this process. So with Mimic, you can just go uh, to the dialog, and you can enter your URL or your client's URL, logitech.com, for example. Um, and now the plugin does all the heavy lifting, so it really creates a DOM of the a website, a snapshot. And now we see all the data that uh, was extracted, so we have access to all the font names that were used on that uh, website. We see placeholders with all the different colors that were used. And we also see a bunch of uh, images here that are used on the website, so now it, it's really <coughs> super easy to start the design process. So for example, you can use these placeholders to create a background. You can use the, uh, the logo. And it's basically just moving these things around. And um, yeah, it's really uh, speeding up the process. So uh, you don't have to use the browser for this kind of stuff anymore. So everything works within uh, XD. Um, yeah, that was uh, Mimic. So if you want to try that, just uh, go to the Discover uh, mode uh, in XD. And it's, uh, it's out there. Um, and I would love to. Uh, hear your feedback uh, or even feature requests uh, for Mimic. Yeah, right. this was a good example for, a, let's say, quite simple plugin that really just saves time. So, um, of course, everybody can pick mm -hmm. colors and, and fonts manually um, from the other websites, but this is really very easy to, to prove um, how mm -hmm. much time you can Definitely. save. And Personas is a, a little bit more complex. It's about if you, if you want to build for different personas and you, you want to build profiles for them. Exactly. So yeah, right. you're totally right. Uh, Mimic, from a user's perspective, is super simple. But from a developer's perspective, it was like kind of mind-blowing because we need an entire uh, orchestrated web browser yeah. instance. Uh, but you're totally right. Uh, so uh, from a user's perspective, uh, we try to make everything as simple and smooth as possible. And that's the, the same with Persona. So as you already mentioned, it's the, uh, I mean, everyone is familiar with the uh, Personas. I mean, you can go to Pinterest, and you will see all these beautifully crafted Personas. But it's really uh, a hassle to do that, um, to create these uh, by hand on a daily basis. So we thought, why not create a plugin for that? So if you go to plugins personas, that's already published. So you can ju just download it. And it's basically just one click. And then you will see uh, all the different personas that were generated. So this was uh, created uh, beautifully crafted by one of our colleagues from Switzerland. Um, you can actually see that in the. Uh, in the footer as well. Um, so, yeah, as I said, it's just one click, but there's also some options here. So you can uh, select how many personas you want to be generated. You can select the language. Right now we support English and German. And you can even change the portrait style here. So you end up like this. So you can really create all kinds of personas with this uh, plugin. Um, and the cool thing, uh, I guess, is that everything is just plain XD elements, so you can adjust these values super easily just by dragging these things around. So I think it won't get any easier. Um, so we have these bunch of templates already coming with it, and we are thinking of uh, opening up that to the community as well, um, because I'm pretty sure that many of you guys out there have personas created at some point, uh, and maybe have them uh, in a Dropbox or a Creative Cloud uh, lying around. And um, 
If you want to share it, maybe you can just send us an email as well so we can put it in there with your name or your contact card next to it. So it's also a great promotion, I guess. Okay, so this would be just more options to, to pick and choose different exactly. um, profiles. Great. We also have someone in the chat saying Mimic is cool, nice and easy. So yeah, if you have <laughs> any questions or comments about the plugins being presented, um, type them down. I'll read them out loud. Thanks for that. Yeah. And so also, yeah. if you have other ideas, uh, we should uh, or we definitely want to hear those as well as well so if you think you can maybe create them on your own or we have yeah, just uh, either tell them to other developers like simon um or we come to this um, in a minute um try to start using your javascript yeah. skills and then build it on your own so give me something to do so it's up to you what i will be working on in the next couple of months so just yeah. pitch your ideas and uh let's make this a challenge so which plugin <laughs> do you do you want? <laughs> yeah, we still have you some have time, a wish right? Free? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can do some live coding here. Um, yeah, but first, uh, yeah, that was uh, Persona, so we can move over to Stark. That's a very nice plugin um, that uh, I think a developer from the US uh, yeah. did, uh, which is really amazing. So it's all about uh, accessibility. Um, so it's a colorblind simulator and contrast checker, um, and it's really super simple so c you can really integrate that in your daily work so for example if you want to check contrast um, or the contrast between two elements which is really important uh, um, for accessibility yeah it's basically as simple as that just select those two elements and then you can check the contrast and then you will see the contrast ratio and there are a bunch of tests right now everything is uh, looking good but if we do the same test uh, with the the second and the third uh, combination, we will see that we already fail big time uh, with the one in the middle and the right one completely fails. So we definitely have to tweak this design because uh, it's not really working uh, for people um, that are colorblind. And we also have Which to are few, uh, well many <laughs> of them. Yeah. Yeah. And also like it's, um, again here, the rules for colorblindness and accessibility, they are clear. It's easy to, to figure them out. But just having this with one click and see if your design yeah, fits exactly. this role, this is really what makes... So there's uh, no excuse anymore yeah. not to use this. Um, and I think uh, nowadays it's really important uh, to create if, uh, yeah, efficiently ex uh, accessible but also ethic uh, ethical um, uh, and inclusive designs. Mm -hmm. uh, and it this plugin really, really I've actually done that. some research into that. And uh, it said that like about 4.5% of the world population is colorblind. And I also designed an app for a blind marathon runner before. Oh, cool. So yeah, I've, I've gotten into that. So I think this is, this is actually really, really helpful. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, so especially if you, if you build official websites for, for the government. Um, there are many regions in the world already today um, where you need um, to deliver accessible um, websites yeah. fully. And so these tools can really you help. You have to have websites that can be accessed by yeah. disabled people as yeah. well. Right. Yeah. That's even sure. an a legal issue, right? Yeah. Especially like yeah. in Germany. And I mean, it's a good thing. So it's super cool to see plugins uh, that are really tackling these uh, not so obvious problems mm -hmm. uh, in some cases. Um, so yeah, that was Stark. Um, so now we can talk a little bit about uh, handoff, which is of course super important with uh, with um, XD yeah. and developers or project managers, clients. I mean, we have to handoff. Also off helps us. We don't have to do design guidelines anymore. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. So um, yeah, XD also comes with a, a bunch of options here, but sometimes that's not not enough. So um, let's imagine you want to push your design sprints right to the project management. Um, that's where you might use something like Airtable or Slack or uh, maybe Trello. So let's have a little uh, or a closer look uh, at the Trello integration, which I really love. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Have you tried this one out? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like super smooth. It's so let's, very let's easy, yeah. have a look at this. So if you're not familiar with Trello, uh, Trello is this card based uh, organizing project management system. I mean, you can use it for all kinds of, of stuff. Um, so let's have a look what this looks like in the context of XD. So let's assume we have this uh, Trello board here. So we have cards that we can move around easily. So now we can use XD on the left-hand side. And uh, let's do a small design iteration here. Let's uh, throw in some Unsplash images. Big fan here. Unsplash mm. is like the lifesaver. Um, so yeah, it's just a very simple iteration here. So now we want to push that to Trello. So we can go to plugins, Trello, upload, selection to Trello. 
and then we see this dialog. So of course you have to be logged in. You need an account with Trello, but it's uh, for free. So it's really not a big deal. So then we can select the board we want to publish our um, artwork in. Then we can select the list. And now the cool thing is we can create a new card here. So if you uh, uh, take a closer look at the right-hand side where you can see the Trello board. Yeah, actually, we can also use mentions here. So I can, for example, tell my colleague Daniel to review this item uh, with the client and give some feedback. So now I can hit Save Card in the next step here. And now we will see that this card pops up in Trello right away. So we don't even have to leave XD. I just open Trello here for, for demonstration purposes. So now we can select the format for the uh, image. PNG looks good. We can use Retina or high resolution here. And now again, if we hit Upload now, we will see that this image pops up in this card in Trello right away. And now assume uh, that Daniel has this board open uh, on his machine, so he will see that uh, instantaneously. So it's really easy to share designs uh, yeah, with your team or with your clients. you just have a few designers, but you collaborate with others that either use Trello, Slack, exactly. Jira, Jira Cloud, um, MS Teams. And so, yeah, we have a lot of integrations to those yeah. other apps, yeah. So yeah, XD plays very well with all the different players in this, this field. Uh, and there's also, uh, oh, did you mention uh, Dribble as well? Uh, that's no, Dribble did I not mention, but um, there's another plugin for yeah, that. Yeah, there's another one, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it's as simple as that. So just one click and you can publish your work right to Dribble. Uh, so that's really amazing if you want to share uh, your work on all the different platforms out there. So um, if that's something you like, uh, XD uh, has that covered. Uh, yeah, up next is uh, Data Populator. That's one of my favorite uh, Plugins. I mean, from it's Precious and in super Hamburg. powerful. Yeah. Exactly. So that's uh, developed by our friends uh, from Hamburg, Precious Design Studio, um, and it's all about um, yeah using real data to uh, mock up uh, or for mocking up data. Before you continue, there is a question: Is there um, XD and Slack integration? There is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a Slack. What's the name? Um, <laughs> this is Slack um, plugin um, for that. Um, we can figure this out and then send the, the link later. Or just Google for it. Okay. Yeah, so definitely Google Slack, will Slack and Adobe XD, yeah. Okay. It's not an XD plugin, it's, it's on, a, on the it's Slack, Slack side. On the yeah. Slack side. Okay, you have to install it through Slack, but Ingo explains it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, back to uh, Data Populator. So um, it comes with a demo project that is really explaining uh, the, uh, the power of this plugin so we can use placeholders with curly braces. Uh, right in our designs, as you can see here, it's super straightforward. And then we can create a data set for our mockup um, uh, data. So this is just plain JSON, so very simplified JavaScript object. Um, and we can see this is a data set, and we have different um, fields here, like the first name, the last name, and of course the email field here. And if we have uh, set up this, it's super easy to apply these mockup data to our design. So we can select the uh, artwork here, and then we can go to data populator, populate with JSON, and then we can load this file that we just uh, saw. And then we see a preview, but we don't care about that right now, so just hit populate, and then the plugin uh, does this magic. So we see a random data s uh, mm -hmm. set being applied to this piece, so now we see the, the image and all the text applied. But of course, it's a uh, really great uh, if you work with lists, as you can see here, it's super easy to apply the same technique to a list. And now we can see what this list looks like with all kinds of uh, content. But that's not all. The coolest thing, of course, of, of uh, XD is the repeat grid. And Data Populator really plays well with this. So we can um, run populate again in this case, and then we will see all the different values here. And it's really great to test your designs against different um, text length and different image styles. So you can hit populate again over oh, and over. Different regions, different languages as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can put different languages in there, especially like German is always a little bit longer, as we know. So it's really easy to, s to find out where, you where your design actually fails or breaks, where you have to tweak your design a little bit. Yeah. So that's really uh, a great thing. And if you're interested in this plugin, you have to go to datapopulator.com. Um, there are way more options uh, that we cannot cover right here. Um, so there are all kinds of uh, conditional clauses, uh, more actions. So if you want these texts to be uppercase, that's just one uh, 
uh, one command here, and it's it's really really powerful. Mm -hmm. So if you like uh, mock-up data, you definitely have to check out this one. And also, this is again just an example for um, one of multiple plugins that allow to access data from other sources. Yeah. So we have uh, Google Sheets plugin, yeah, Google, for example, course, uh, as well. Important. And so this is again just showing the power, like how to design faster with data that you already have. And there's many opportunities out there. Yeah. Great features. So we don't have so much time left, but what is worth to mention is the Europe tour that you're going to do. So we have uh, 25th um, this month in London, 27th here in Amsterdam, and 1st of March in... In Mannheim. In Mannheim. In South of Germany. <laughs> <laughs> South of Germany, yeah, Google it. <laughs> Near Frankfurt. I think that's and you guys will be there, and you can um, learn how to code a plugin you will yep. give a workshop. Let's just go to the website for a minute. Um, it's easy. It's yeah, a, we only a, have one it's, minute left. It's a, it's a bit <laughs> link. Um, hello, XD plugin. Um, check it out. We have Adobe engineers here. We have the lead technical evangelist, um, our developer advocate, um, and some um, already XD plugin developers like Simon and other local heroes with us. Um, and this is really for you if you want to develop your own plugins or if you just want to better understand. Um, what's behind this uh, ecosystem and you would like to find developers to build integrations. And also, we showed public plugins today, but you could use the same kind of plugin idea to develop something that you only use within your company um, and which you share privately. Awesome, great, thank you very much. So coming up next is Rufus with Build in Amsterdam, um, great agency. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for the presentation. That was very helpful. I hope the community liked it as well. Leave your comments, get in touch um, with Simon, give him feedback, what plugins you like, which ones you don't. <laughs> and, and come to the <laughs> workshop to build your own. All right, thank yeah, you very see much. You there. See we you go eating waffles now. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. thank you very much. Thank and you enjoy your waffles. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Bye-bye.